You joined us today en route from Marrakesh to Casablanca via the train. We've opted to leave Marrakesh a day ahead of schedule in order to allow ourselves time to more fully explore Casablanca before we fly home. For this leg of our stay, we're in a downtown hotel in the center of it all. Most of what we want to do is within walking distance. Came out to see the mosque, Hassan II. We'll have to come back tomorrow. I have one photo of the minaret. I'm going to include here. I'll show you real quick. But uh, what happened since then? This fog just rolled in real heavy. So that was quick. It's one thing that Morocco has. It's beautiful, elaborate doorways. So I'm going to take you around a little bit, show you this incredible place. Uh, but this place is just magnanimous. And I can't wait for our tour tomorrow. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Situated here on the waterfront in Casablanca and completed in 1993, Grand Mosque Hassan II is the largest mosque in Africa and the fifth largest in the world. Its minaret is the world's tallest at 210 meters. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Two, three. <laughs> Thank you. Can't trust you. No. <laughs> Morning. We are in a uh, inside Hassan Mosque too, and there's really no camera angle I can show you that will encapsulate the whole foyer experience. So I'm just going to shoot video. Because seriously, I, you just have to visit. It's, it's remarkable. Very large, uh, beautiful, ornate, detail-oriented, and uh, I'll shoot what I can. But you're just gonna have to visit. We are on uh, Mosque uh, Hassan II. Mm -hmm. Just we wait for the guide so they can take us through like uh, the museum and then like uh, the bath and then the Turkish path and then where we do the prayers and other items like that. This is my second time here in this month. We each had a nickname on this trip. I was Mohammed, Mustafa was Maurice. But Rustin's nickname had yet to be set. Who's Bilal? So Bilal was one of the first slaves like to embrace Islam at the time of the Prophet. Like, so he was like, he called for prayers. And then sometimes even the prophets used to ask him to lead the prayers uh, at the time. Right. And so that is the uh, the proposed nickname for Rustin. Yeah. And with that story, I want to share another story. Another... Not, we took executive action and his name is going to be like Bilal. the one before Bilal. Yeah? Okay, good. Right. So there was, a, there was also another Bilal. There was two good friends, a light-skinned guy, a dark-skinned guy, uh, whose parents left town. And they decided to have a house party yeah. at, their, at their parents' house against all their parents' wishes. And in order to have the house party invite all their friends, they hired a DJ uh, who had notoriously bad breath. And his name was also Bilal. So I think it's a good choice for a nickname for Rustin. No. So Maurice so is just, also a good nickname. I don't have no problem with Maurice. Yeah, so let me tell you a story about a famous Maurice. So, uh, I, don't hear, I don't want to hear any more of your stories. It's a wrap up day. We're at the airport in Casablanca on the way home. Mr. Rustin Moore, aka Ryan of Rusty. I can't talk on video because I don't have my uh, sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was when we came in. Right. That was cool. What is this? Some kind of gas. Last shot. Woo! Hop on a flight. Wrap up. We're on a tarmac. Uh, Does anybody know what tarmac means? Morocco was dope. It was fantastic. It mm -hmm. was uh, a busy flight here, but we. Uh, we have the whole plane to ourselves on the way back. Yeah, they put Rustin back near the bathroom, but I invited him up in the uh, human section. So he now has a seat that reclines thanks to me. Got you covered. Yeah. All right, until next time. Peace. Yeah, it's fantastic. Next flight. Check it later. Bye. <laughs>